Yeah. Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, yeah. Parks and Rec meeting for uh, November. Uh, the minutes were distributed to everybody in advance. I think everybody, we just need to go through and approve the uh, uh, the October meeting minutes. So, all in favor? Minutes. Oh, both of them? October and September. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, those minutes have been approved for September and October. We have, well, I didn't ask if we had a second to the one. We have a second to the one. Okay. All right. Um, so those minutes have been approved. Now, um, I want to go around the room and welcome the visitors that we have, and maybe we need a little introduction if we start right over here. I'm um, Jeffrey Creel with uh, HHPR, the Landscape Architects. Okay. Uh, Bo Brayman with HHPR, I'm the uh, Consultant Project Manager and Civil Engineer for the project. Okay, staying at the table. Everybody's a member in the back. Terry, let's start with her. Oh, I'm Tara. <laughs> uh, I live in Auburn Farms. Parks and Park. Okay. I'm Becca. I also live in Parks. We're excited about the Parks. Okay. I'm also with HHBR, civil engineer. Okay, great. Now, um, I want these two gentlemen to introduce themselves because Jerry uh, Nelzine won't be with us tonight. And uh, Dustin and Spencer are going to be probably filling in and taking up some of those duties, you know, as with the Parks and Rec Board and the Parks and Rec Department. So. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, I'm sir. Dustin Brace. I've been with the city for quite some time. Um, I work in the facilities department, and um, yeah, you'll be seeing it these me. You'll be seeing me at these meetings much more. Just want to be a part of it. So, and I'm Spencer Pollock, uh, public work supervisor. Took over for Jeff, and so I will be coming in and out of these meetings as well. Okay. okay. All right. And you guys are familiar with pretty much everybody at the table as far as the board members. Majority. Yes. 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 Seen a lot of the faces anyways. Yeah. Do you want us to do a quick <laughs> if you'd like. Let's do a quick introduction of board members starting with Jim. So that he's there. Jim Sender. Ryan Oliver. Terry Jones. Dave Criscar. Okay. Barry Johnson. Doug Reagan. Kara Hawkins. Kathy Ray Smith. Davis and the only one we're missing is Andrew Van. All right, so to start with, um, we were going to have another guest come, and he had a he had asked for some time to make a, a presentation. Uh, David Clanky, who is a citizen of Canby, who has taken on uh, a pretty large role in developing the nature park that's down the community park and, and doing some um, park improvements on areas that are well i don't know terry i mean he worked over at westland too so he he's a he's just a, a very a, a very uh, good volunteer and he wanted to make a presentation to kara hawkins from the uh, Garden Club, because you took pictures and put them on your Facebook, and you did some um, a lot of work for the group. So the Candy Garden Club and the community, um, the community park and ever, and help David and put pictures on your website. Kara is the she runs the, what, the Friends of Candy Friends Parks. Of Candy Parks so. I, I had a brainstorm a few years ago when I came to the, um, well, I know Scott Sassy, so I asked him what to do, and he said, go talk to the Parks Board, and I did, and they asked them for permission to create on Facebook the Friends of Candy Park page. So we use it for park stuff. Big deal. And so, yeah, she put up a lot of pictures for them, and so that's their thing no, to do it. If David would have been here, but he himself is not feeling well, so mm -hmm. it's going around. Yeah. All right, so um, we'll go into our 
monthly parks update. Uh, normally with Jerry, but now would be Dustin and Spencer. I'll, I'll take us through to the next step. It would be with Bo and, and, and the reps from HHPR to talk about uh, Auburn Farms or the Dodds Park development. And then we could take some feedback. This, this meeting is to really talk about Auburn Farms and moving forward. So, yeah, and I'm not sure how much has been shared or if anyone's seen eyes on it other than tonight, but um, I think it was maybe last week I got contacted about a couple minor changes to the one that we presented, which is the bigger one that's kind of hidden. And that part was to remove the tennis courts and to have maybe just a soccer, I don't know, I read it as one soccer goal, but obviously there's space for more, but there's to remove the tennis court, extend the path to the, the outer uh, boundary, and then just have that more as an open space. Um, the other um, the other request was to make it a two, the <clears throat> one bathroom restroom, uh, have two stalls. So we, we changed that, that square that's in the parking lot that has a two stall restroom uh, with access around all four sides. The, the two end pieces, the two ends is where the, where the bathroom doors are, and then one other side has the drinking fountain, the other side has a maintenance door. So it's accessible all four sides. Um, and then the last request was to um, look at some, or look at an option for a ADA accessible uh, merry-go-round. So we put that piece of equipment in the playground. Um, and then it also was to take a, a little, another option and look at some of the toddler play uh, structures the thought that some of the ones we proposed might be too much like a house <clears> and <throat> homeless people might try to live in them. So we, we've, we presented like five more options for open ones. Um, so I'm not sure how this whole process works, but where we're at right now is what we call like a 30% design. So we've went through the design as it is. We've put enough thought to it that we feel like we have a, a, a pretty good cost estimate to say we're at about this for the cost with a you know we throw a 30 percent contingency on it for the, the unknowns only at three percent design but in order to i guess move forward in in a, a manner that's conserving budget and time i think the big decision maker or the big decisions that we need to make now are is the playground i think kind of all stem, stems around the playground this the playground we have multiple options of play structures uh, we have pricing for them uh, another big topic would be the surfacing. Right now we're showing kind of a rubberized mat surfacing. Uh, the price of that is a lot more expensive than bark chips. Um, so what is the surfacing and then what pieces do you guys want? Um, and then I think I've, uh, I've kind of prepared um, all the play, different playground options for equipment, uh, the site furnishing, so things like the gazebo, the benches, the drinking fountains. We've given kind of a, a long list of pictures and I think what we would be hoping for is you know somebody to go through it you know I, I brought pictures and things to and we share them all too but someone to go through it to say hey these are the five pieces of equipment we want and we want it to be rubberized or not you know or bar chips and here's the I like that bench style I like that gazebo style and that way to move forward 60 we can get more accurate pricing we can make sure that the things are available we can you know uh, at the 60% level would grade the site out more. It would, you know, figure out all the stormwater management, the water that needs to go to the uh, the fountains and the play to the uh, play fountain, the um, splash pad. Um, so yeah, 60 is really where you start putting in a lot of engineering design. Um, but we don't want to move that direction if we're going to go back because we haven't decided on what the playground even is size out. You know, so I think I think that's kind of what we're hoping to try to accomplish. And, you know, to help us proceed. So I, I don't know what the best way to go if it, is to share. Well, I think, well, you know, <laughs> good question. I mean, what you had to show, you've given us a visual, but now I think, you know, I'm sure people have questions and might want to, you know, we can open it up to the group sure. and see what thoughts are. Uh, one thing is surface. I don't think bark chips will work for ADA because it's it's going to have to be some type of rubber surface. And Doug was, you know, he was the spokesperson for the school, I guess, for a while, and yeah. playground equipment and the, and the 
So maybe the question I'll start from the ground up is um, in the district, we chose rubberized tiles instead of a solid floor mat. Um, we did that because of maintenance is easier on you just pull the tile and pop the tile in. Um, is there a cost benefit to either one of solid floor which is tiles? Yeah, the tiles are, are a bit cheaper mm -hmm. than the board in place. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, not um, drastically, <coughs> but sure, sure. But and like you said, the maintenance is user friendly versus yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, is it a is it a big deal? I see a lot of curves there. I mean, no, you just you know, so that's just common. Yeah. 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 That's just to make it look pretty. Pretty <laughs> space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Sure, but yeah, you could do that. Um, the design could be done uh, with tiles and more of a you know linear form. Um, also, artificial turf is a thing that's out there that is, is cheaper than port in place rubber. Is there a backing behind that turf to give your fall protection? Yeah, yeah. Around the, the fall protection zones, they have a thick padding that goes underneath it. What's the uh, life span of uh, the turf? Uh, it's like 10 years, depending on where, you know, yeah. similar to a ball field. But the turf has more maintenance, whereas the tiles don't, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. The turf would not be a do-it-yourself fix at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I would think, I mean, it's like, what would our reference be in relation to, I, I you know, I mean, moving forward, we'd like to be able to give them some idea of what we would like to see when they go to present it further. So I would lean, instead of turf or instead of hardships, I would lean towards the core in place or the tiles. The schools, I think, like Doug said, have all switched to the tiles. Yeah, and that, yeah. That's not a huge... Um, that right there will make or break our design going backwards, right? And the things that would get, um, if, if that shape changed significantly, right? Or things got cut in half or, oh, we want to eliminate, you know, that's where the things get kind of, we're not progressing. So, you know, us switching out a detail that says the mat for in place versus the, you know, we can come, we can evaluate both prices and present those. That That's not a huge <clears throat> decision, you know, maker for us. So we can, we can do both moving forward. Uh, I like the shape and I like the design. My only, I, I, the one thing I would, to the top of the page or the, the walkway at the top of the page, uh, there's a, a large field up there at this time. And I don't think we would need to put any of that green, other than those trees. That green, I don't know if that saves us any money, but there's a potential that this park could grow in the future if that field mm -hmm. gets developed. So I don't think we need to put in all those nicey bushes and everything right at this time. You know, I think we could eliminate all of that. I would keep those trees that are up there and maybe that walkway then could move further up the page. The only concerns, I think you need, I think you have minimum, you have to be five feet away because you don't own that property, right? Yeah, so you have to, you, you, you need to design for setbacks at the moment, right? right? Uh, so I, I think, I, I think if you, yeah, you want to eliminate all the, that would be a soft a cost saving to eliminate all the <clears throat> shrubs. I, would you still want to um, put a fence up for now for safety reasons, or would, or would you leave that wide open and save costs there too? I think we could, personally, I think we could leave it open. I don't think we I, would I agree. A I mean, as far as like safety, yeah. no, I mean, what? What kind of fence were you talking about anyway? Like Whatever you got, I mean, uh, typically parks are bordered by something, right? It's either the homeowner's fence that they installed previously or right. somebody puts a park, you know, I think you guys probably, would, I would imagine just a chain link fence would be the cost effective <clears throat> mechanism, right? Right. So I think, I think where the homes are, I think anywhere where there's developments, I think the homeowners are gonna want you to have that fence, right? right? But to the north, if yeah, if there's no one out there that's going to complain about it or say anything, you could save some money. I mean, we can always put a fence in later. Late, exactly. Yeah. Right. I, think, I would say we could leave that open. If if they're out there working the fields, though, and some kid crawls out in there. Yeah, I feel like the line might be blurred. 
for some people. Mm -hmm. know, that bring their dogs. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to throw it out in this field here. Just, I mean, yeah. just knowing. Well, with where the soccer goes at, and they're playing soccer, and they kick a ball into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, weren't there a couple of trees in there that people had wanted to have stay? One big one. Yeah. I think is it's it's like right in the middle of it. Yeah, is it still there? And I mean, yeah, but people yeah. wanted that to stay. I remember yeah, when I got to see it. Yeah, it does. I feel like it would be the shape of it. Yeah. It's a great we're showing everybody seeing that. It wasn't a spent light to light. Everybody wanted that so yeah. instead. It's in that um, it's just really big. Sorry. There's there's two out of the three that we were were one out of the three that we were proposing to keep. Um, and it's it's not shown in this plan though. But they're uh, to the where you see the uh, splash pad. Yeah. If you look to it, kind of go to the right a little bit. Keep going. Right about there. There's an existing tree that we will be protecting. The other two have to go because they're in that parking lot. And I think we've decided that uh, parking stalls are more important than those two trees. And even that big tree that you're talking about, have you, maybe we should have an arborist take a look at it or something because it's not. Yeah, it's a 41 inch. It's big. Yeah. yeah. At the moment, the direction we had from Jerry was to keep that one. But yeah, he, if, if the city decides that. Someone should look at it before we keep it for sure. Sure. Well, that would be one that, that we need to have an arborist take a look at, see if it's healthy. But, uh, I have a question about the parking lot. Um, the straight in slots rather than diagonal, um, is, I, I understand that that probably gives you an extra space, but I, my husband, he drives a SUV and he cusses and drinks. He's doing why not get diagonal? So, <laughs> is there a reason we do? So, we, we presented all options. I just go look around the room and see if they were still here. Yeah. Right, right here, right there, Jeff, on that wall. See that wall there? Mm -hmm. Down below. That, those are great there. ones, also. Well, I think, no, I think behind it's oh. state one. So, I think we presented all options, and um, the thought was. I think there was two options, if I remember. This way it gives you more spells. And secondly, the thought of diagonal, they, for some reason, we didn't want to have a one. The diagonal leads in, in and out one direction. And someone decided that that was not what they wanted. And it could also be somebody with fire trucks, too. I, we evaluated, I laid we it out. A fire chief right here who <laughs> could tell us. I laid it out with diagonals i laid it out this way i also laid it out with one entrance and exit kind of like a dead end right and so I, those exhibits over there have all the options and this is where <clears throat> we've got to from how many spots do you lose if you go down my husband always says this is a suburb town a lot of people buy drive trucks they're big cars going in at a 90 degree angle Whoa. You can drive the car with him and go to Fred Meyer and you can get the whole story. So we have 12. You're not going to be allowed in this truck. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So this is what it looks like. If you want to see it, definitely it's not as, it feels tighter for sure. Um, okay. The difference is 12 to 17. So it is a pretty significant. Oh, that is. So. We have explored that option, um, and I, you know, this is where I was directed to move forward to. Jim, is a as far as from a fire standpoint, is there a, a any issue with the with the parking lot? What about maintenance maintenance access? What would that be? So that those uh, on that that path on the out exterior is a ten foot asphalt path, and over that's a bollard right there. So that'd be a removable bollard, so you can have access around the whole entire park with your maintenance vehicles. Um, so that was quick. Uh, so I assume we got rid of the tennis court for costs. That's a that's a. It can be, you know, I mean, it could be added. Uh, <clears throat> so my thought would be. If I was 10 year old Ryan Oliver, if you just keep going, I guess, west, 
having that big long sidewalk cut right through the middle, if you kind of rounded it off, that way you have like a almost like a field. Sure. Instead of Cindy, yeah, I thought that too. Looking at it, the initial <laughs> plan that I, the initial plan that I had, that I saw, yeah, had that walkway just going, you know, vertical from the bottom to the top, just cut across right about where that gazebo. Okay. Um, yeah, that give you that would give you a, a more square field, and it also lets you plug and play the tennis court pretty easily in the future. I, I kind of already thought about that. We put this together last night. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I uh, agree with you there. And also, yeah, having that whole back area open gives you potential for the future. It's kind of a great, that great space. So. Yeah. Yeah, there um, was some talk about, sorry, some a dog space kind of in that lower <laughs> part. And I don't know if that, if we wanted to maintain the separate between those two uses. We like Northwoods Park that we have right now. People walk their dogs in there, and whatever we provide, you know, the, the bags and mm -hmm. you know, whatever. We probably do the same thing. Not many people will walk their dogs yeah. in there. There's, but it's not going to be a dog park. There's no designated no. space for it. That was my only concern. Yeah. And another thing to consider too, I, if you want it for maintenance, we do have a ten foot path. If you know, if we are, you know, cost is still an issue. It always is an issue, but an eight foot path might be drivable for the maintenance trucks too. I mean, so temp, the temp, a standard park install is nine by eighteen. So you know, if you did a nine foot path versus a ten, you know, there's there's some ways to cut, you know, cut a whole foot off that whole thing. There's some cost there too. So that's another. I have a ton of ideas for cost savings if that is what the most important thing is. But you know the a large part of the driving design is what the heck is this playground? You know, and what what pieces are we including? Um, Do you have an idea on this particular layout the way it is? What the cost would be? Uh, this guy right here. Yeah. Give you a step on your Excel sheet for A and B. So, so the we gave you two the big cost savings, like I mentioned, was the park. The two, the two. We give you A, which is like the Cadillac Park with all the best, the biggest, best equipment and the rub rise. And then B was a smaller version of that with the bark. So the biggest cost saving there was between our two cost estimates, but our tennis court alone, we have at uh, $60,000. So we saved 60 by getting the tennis court and that's either, either version. Um, but then, you know, picking out the parks uh, equipment, one, one version was 525,000. The other one was 190,000. So that's the difference between rubberized and bark and less equipment. You know, so we were kind of trying to, you know, I, I think I, I we put together packages with, you know, probably like 40 different options for park equipment. So you know, I think that was kind of the big driver is decide. We really love this, 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 this. What's the cost of that? You know, it's it's hard for us to quantify. Um, it went on the bathroom. Um, the bathroom went up about twenty thousand dollars for the bigger bathroom. What so, is the taking out the shrubs on the top section? What's that going to say? Uh, shrubs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about ten grand. Probably ten grand or so. Yeah. In the fence one, yeah, I, I think I. I think I see both sides. It probably makes sense to put the fence so just bound this whole thing. I, I would feel better if there yeah. was at least a site on there. Yeah. And fences, fences, uh, fence is expensive though. It's $92,000. So yeah, that fence is. How high is that fence? That we just have it as a six, six foot chain link fence. But is that all the way around? Yeah. Is that, okay, so we're, we're just talking we're, the north side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you're safe. I mean, it's the north side if you kind of do the math. The north yeah. side is probably 30 grand, right? Yeah. So it's expensive. Yeah. Um, How many different pieces of equipment do you think you can put in the playground? It kind of depends on what it is. What, yeah. 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 The, 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 the that you have to have with each piece. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the fall zones get bigger where you're spinning and rocking and 
lotion type equipment. I don't know, all our options. Do you want me to go through all of them? People want us to. I don't know. The best way to do it is this is the right equipment. Take them home and look at them. I don't know the best way to do it. Take that sheet off and show me. And then if you want on this other screen to show different pieces, the different pieces that you're proposing, I guess. Yeah, so this is the, um, this is what we called option A, which was the, the Holy Grail Cadillac. It was very apparent. Yeah. <laughs> we should just start there. Start with the other one. Yeah, start you, with go B. B, you go for B of the play structure. Yeah. So it sounds like regardless, we're going to do the surfacing. So that's kind of doesn't matter. So yeah, this right. was a, a different option for um, and what, freestanding or the what we named Jeff, Jeff, this year or everything. It's so yeah, cool. there's so many pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I just were going through some of this and uh, well, let me look at the swing. I mean, how many how many spots do you have on that, that swing set? Well, so I guess that would be one question for you, Bo, is where did I put that now? Yeah, the screen. Um, so like right here, it looks like you're doing a swing set through here. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's like a quad bay. Okay, so do you need to know exactly which swing set that everyone likes, or do you just need to know that it's a swing set? It's a swing <laughs> set, roughly five swings. I, I think roughly that if we can get um, I think I think Jeff, that don't think if we knew that we wanted a swing set that was four wide, we could move to sixty and give them a couple options, right? Yeah, that's not gonna okay. as, long, as long as this like a whatever you want to call that peanut shape thing isn't change. You know, as long as the whole thing isn't dramatically changing, finding the fine tuning the pieces is probably okay later. But yeah, just in general, like we want a swing set, we want that a merry go round, we want you know, like give us five or six pieces, and then Jeff right. can prepare a. Kind of a cut sheet and say, here's your six options. And this is what we could fit inside of this. That would be area. that would get us good enough that we can feel okay. comfortable to start grading. The, the biggest exercise now is grading. Where does the stormwater go? How does it go ADA compliant throughout? How does everything drain? Where do you put all your utility? You know, those are the biggest pieces. So yeah, actually picking the pieces is probably still okay. Okay. But but yeah, like uh, just helping us get narrowed up a little bit. But we're pretty. I mean, I I would think. Most every playground has a swing set, so I think everybody would be comfortable with a swing set. Okay. And then at some point in time, we would decide. Can you show a picture of that that merry-go-round that is? Yeah, that one. And maybe um, Doug's. Maybe Doug's got. So that's like an ADA compliant style merry-go-round. Would be. Yeah, and that's that's a way different than the one in Maple. Yeah, there's all the vendors offer one, and and they kind of all vary. This one seemed pretty reasonably priced for what it was. See, um, the one that it, it kept coming up ADA people yeah. that are ADA and meet, like maybe in a wheelchair, they want to be able to you know take part in the playground, but there's nothing there for them to do. Yeah. This one, they could wheel their chair That's onto the thing. surface, and then because it's sunken in ground, you can both the ADA people and yeah. Not ADA. I mean, they can use that. Yeah. Is the um, setbacks for that different because of its design than it would be for a traditional merry-go-round? Uh, no, they're essentially the same. Yeah. Okay. Kids still find their way to fling themselves off the back. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but we saw that at the beach. They have a playground with one of those at the beach, and it was all the kids were playing on it and. They get it going so fast, and then if the kid wasn't holding on, they just went flying across that. <laughs> okay. I think they have one of these at uh, Easy Creek Middle School. That's a mm -hmm. new middle school on uh, West Lynn. I think they have something like this in ground too. I think I still don't understand. But so yeah, if so yeah, actually picking the 100% product doesn't have to happen. But if this is a desire, then yeah, we put it on your wish list to put it in that area. Right, and then we, and then we, I think that in the in the interim, once we knew your wish list, we would probably send you three or four options yeah. that you guys could be kind of voting on as we proceed. That way, by the time we got you, know, like I said, we would need probably sixty or like a month to get to sixty. So yeah. that month, if you guys were able to narrow down, well, that's the one we want, then that would be even more helpful. But if, but if the sooner we can actually know what kind of pieces to put in there, that'd be the better, right? I like something like that. Very quick, quick question. What, what do we get input from all the requirements, especially the people that have been attending our meetings? Uh, we should be asking them what yeah. they want. Yeah, we've already, yeah. we've already that. Yeah. Okay. Good. On this plan, 
Uh, on, on the new plan? No, but they've made their. I mean, obviously, that Cadillac winner was like, why is this even? Why are we even asking? Obviously, this one. <laughs> but then I saw the price. Okay. Has there been any discussion for like a uh, jungle gym, open fort type of structure? Because every time I go to a playground, I see kids yeah, playing on things. We keep flip, flipping through stuff, show up the point, we show where we're at, and pick the pieces. So that's a balanced beam, yeah. obviously. There's one of those at Legacy Park we've never seen a kid play on it. And this is kind of showing ADA compliant. Uh, one of the swings would be designated. Perfect. That's what yes. I was. Yeah. But are there other styles of ADA swings? I don't know if there are. I'm just wondering because all of the schools have this same one, um, and it's at is it just the schools? I mean the preschool. But they all have this style one. So I just didn't know if there was another style of ADA swing that might be enjoyed. Yeah, twelfth and uh okay. sons middle school has a different one. Or elementary school, I think they But generally the same idea. They yeah, do, yeah. They do make some that are kind of more like a flat wheel. You can kind of like could roll up onto and, and move, maneuver on, you know, and multiple users can be mm -hmm. on at the same time. Yeah. That's we can set options for that too. But I, I think the safe assumption would be we yeah. have a swing set with at least with one of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Show us what styles. Okay. Um, so those are those little Code schools, yeah. pods, they kind of another balanced toy. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all components of a, of a larger structure. <laughs> a lot of these. <laughs> yeah, so this would be this would be kind of your big structure, mm -hmm. your bigger structures that you know. Then I think. Just figure out what style you like or what things you like, and then we can, uh, yeah. I know Tara, mm -hmm. and we talked about, I think in your plan, you showed a, uh, a net, like a cargo with a hole big, in the middle. Big, big climber. And she, she said with those with the pole in the middle, they got to there, be kind of like Yeah, there's one in Lake Oswego that is like, you climb up it, and it's the whole thing is wobbling. So. I just didn't know if there was like some more fun. <laughs> uh, and there was one Wilkinville that's been replaced by right. a different one that was also that style. So I just didn't know if it was long lasting. The one in Wilsonville now is like a wrap. It's, like it's like a geodesic dome. Yeah, yeah. That keeps the nets, but also has a lot more room. Right. So maybe um, seeing what kind of style is available for, I, I like the climbing thing yeah. mm -hmm. portion. But instead of the single pole, maybe the multiple uh, holes, multiple yeah. dome like that. Yeah, I think in one of these folders, I have an example of that. something similar. Are we doing uh, two separate play structures for age groups? So yeah, we'll have um, areas. The majority of will be the five to twelve range, mm -hmm. and then there's a, the smaller section which we had kind of a playhouse. Theme for the the two to five. So this would be an example of the the two to five range. No, yeah, show these because I know when it came up. Before. But here, this is the one you guys are talking about that probably is not desirable. Yeah. Right. Uh, the the yeah. fighter web with the single. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, some of these structures that were like little houses. And stuff. Oh, I mean, they look they look, they look cool. But I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. They were like, yeah. Yeah. It could, yeah. be, could yeah. be that. So maybe. Yeah, yeah. so this is an example of a different vendor that had one that was a little more open that you could kind of see through from different angles. There must be studies out there saying what the kids like to play on. I think it's a little, I mean, we're older people. We, I don't know what yeah. kids want to play on. <laughs> you, Do you, you guys have to play on that. <laughs> Yeah, seven years ago. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to hear some feedback from you guys on what's out there and what the kids really like. I have no idea. I would have bring the kids in one. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Well, they really like an adult like exercise structures. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't yeah. drive by there without 47 kids piled all over that thing. Yeah. 
no adults. Yeah, there might be the vendors might provide studies. Um, I'm sure. What kind preference of does for stuff that they sell more of than the other? Uh -huh. Yeah. In the school, you guys just put a ton of stuff in. I wonder if there, there's school. probably pieces of equipment that are used more than others out there. Some we would like to, well, I don't work for them anymore, but some should go away. Well, that's but great. That's, but that's good. The brand, brand new stuff that's just like uh, we know the kids are getting hurt on certain pieces of equipment. Well, that's the stuff yeah. that we need to know. About. Yeah. You know, some yeah. stuff that's, that's why it is. That's why it is. Uh, no, someone okay. just told me about it. Oh, it's like down by the river. So I vote for whatever style we do. It's open and not enclosed. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is one of the ones that is a little more open as opposed to the the four wall ones that we had in the previous design. So we do, do we have a broken out jump by like toddler area and the or whatever the younger age versus the I mean you had that broken out. Yeah, you just kind of see. I don't understand it here, but did like I don't know the way you organized in, it in the tan area. Yeah, it's mostly. I mean, on the actual presentations to the other screen, like what is it? Those three that I sent you, those the most recent ones. Yeah, those were the two, two to five. Okay, and we're thinking that those those three would all be in the tan ones. area. Uh -huh. Yeah, they have that that much smaller footprint. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like they're not the folly offy kind too, so they don't need as big an area. Yeah, they're not as high, and so that would be um. Okay, if I got enough windows open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go back. Yeah, or just curious some. Well, I think you know David's point. Either the company that supplies all the playground equipment, or you get what are you finding is requested more or what do they sell the most of or what are the what are the pieces that seem to be the most popular yeah it's it's a good question i mean they they all kind of offer the same thing yeah so. <laughs> these sales i don't know if you're gonna get the yeah right. i don't know if you're gonna get anywhere from there right. gonna, yeah. gonna say oh yeah this one sells the most and it's gonna be the most expensive you know i don't know that you're, <laughs> sure. there's kids studies to say I just don't think you'd ever get anywhere, right? I mean, it took us care with a year just to get through adult decisions. <laughs> yeah. And Doug, with the, you know, not having them in flow, is, would this be considered more open? And, and, uh... I'm not be, I would not be red hot on that one. I think the most, the one that I liked the best was the dozer one. Yeah. <laughs> that one was the most open, um, still had a lot of, features for the kids to play on, but not a lot of hiding room there. Yeah. And so that'd be one piece for the young, you know, I mean, we're, right. trying, we're trying to pair it with sure. multiple. Is this a, is there a theme to that dozer thing? Is, is there a theme to that thing? Not really, it wasn't part of a, a bigger theme. It's just kind of. Here's a dozer. <laughs> Kids like dozers. Well, so I mean, um, so then it has those. Yeah, then then there's the playhouses below there. You keep going down. This would be one of the the houses that has a little more openness to it. You can kind of see on the other side. It's there's one well. like that in Charlton, and my kids are well above this age range, and it's their go-to thing every time. They love having that like window and the door that goes in and the, the all of that. So I understand the like Excuse not me. being closed in, but also, I mean, we've only been in Camby for five years almost, but I've never felt unsafe at any sure. park or ever felt like there's anyone at the park that made me feel a certain way. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I do know when we talk about what kids enjoy, the little ones, like imagine a play and if they can go and feel like they've got something their size like that's, that's what they want to do. well does anybody else in the group have anything that they want to let Bo and the other reps from hhb or no i mean 
one part. Do you guys feel that you have enough that you can go forward with a better plan? I mean, we're going to move the walkway. Uh, we're going to take some of the shrubs out. We'll do I think I think we can. I think I think maybe this this folder on the left here. We've kind of give we've shared you know, and I can leave all these materials too, and you guys can make photocopies. But I think maybe did you know you guys digging through all the different structures we've kind of presented and saying you know because we you know we did, we talked about two potential toddler play you know that's two of those pieces we talked about the mirror go around we talked about the swing and then the spider web we talked about finding a, a alternate for spider web right but then you still have like the big playground the main one that we didn't really talk about all the pieces for and then they have like teeter totter it looks like maybe right down below you know there's i think if you take all the stuff and give us a wish list of this or similar, then we can kind of help progress. But I, I definitely think if, if, as long as you like the layout of the shape in a half court and a splash pad and the back, you know, if you like everything else, we can definitely move forward um, and, 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 and keep going. It, it would just be at some point we got to fill in that inside. So, so do we have a resource where we could go online and look at different vendors and what they have? Yeah, I can provide you. With that. I can provide you a list of vendors. Um, yeah. I don't have a preference one way or the other. Sure. Sure. Yeah, um, there's just so many out there, so yeah. many different prices, yeah. so many. It's like yeah. it's kind of hard to pick a right or a wrong. Yeah, we're that, probably not going to get a price. What, what we have access to with the vendors, but just maybe to look at the stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Does this city purchase the play equipment on their own, or do you? Send that out to bid. Does anyone have to? <laughs> to be to be honest, the two of us that are here representing the city have not or weren't here the last time that the park was built or play structure. Okay. Well, I, I would think that they send it out to bid. Yeah. You have to have certain funds and dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know some municipalities choose to purchase the equipment on their own to get a better price and then they have it down. The install is done as a as a lump sum from the contractor. Yeah, sure. um, another thing too, while we're on the same topic, we can, so that's playgrounds A and B. There was one more piece of this pie. Um, so is that not oh here um, site furnishing. So so that so I've also created these, which gives you options for different site furnishings. That's the other piece where, you know, like, uh, you know, if, if, if general, you know, like we can put benches wherever we think are good, but, you know, eventually, you know, figuring out what style bench, um, there's different bike rack styles, um, drinking fountains. We have, you know, they kind of have like the dog at the bottom, um, the gazebos, you know, there's different styles for that. Um, all kind of based on similar parts. Garden areas. So this these things are all kind of uh I think we like I said, once again, we can move forward because these, as long as the general layout and the shape and the the the, the pass and you know the, we're gonna have a park. I think that lets us move forward, but eventually, you know, like kind of voting and circling like this is the one we want. Well, we just um, we went through a whole process to standardize our parks oh, with the benches and the picnic tables and stuff. So, perfect, great. Um, so Jerry has made a decision on. I mean, he was given three options. Okay. Yeah, I asked Jerry and said, yeah, if you have other park, because you know any of the stuff that you, uh, we love that yeah. product. We can get a yeah. good price. It will create. Just send that to us, and we'll just slam it in there. We have, you know, we're yeah. just trying our best to give you yeah. options to. Um, one, oh, there's a brand new park in uh, Rockaway Beach, and um, they had some musical equipment. And I, do you guys have? I saw uh, one labeled Smart Play. I was wondering if that might have. I mean, it was like a big, um, like a xylophone. Like xylophone. Um, and then there was, a, it, you know, it was like a table type xylophone. And then there was up above where they had. Which I thought was, and there was kids all over it, so I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't if there's things like that. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Creative sort of usable stuff. Yeah, like less, yeah. yeah, not as physical. Uh, there was like a, instead of the toadstools, it, they were uh, like bongo drums that the kids. So they had this whole like little music area, which was kind of cool. Is neighbor is that a neighborhood concern <laughs> to ask the bar those? You said to go on uh, pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> Live band. <laughs> <laughs> kids love that. Very loud attitude. <laughs> <laughs> they would enjoy it. I don't. You know, I don't know. One other thing that was up. I don't know what these uh, like. There's concrete, and it's with maybe uh, checkers or uh, mm. chess or ping pong. Table. I don't know what those things even cost or if they're even. An option, but be worried about the chess pieces vanishing. Yeah, yeah. Right. And like I think that. Um, so I've seen kind of like you bring your own. I mean, you're you're just providing the well, table. Oh, you're yeah. thinking like you're yeah. talking about the big piece. You're thinking oh, about no, no, like no, 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 Oh yeah, yeah, you could do that where you have. Uh, I've seen it where they have ping pong tables that are made out of concrete and right. they, they, they yeah, so you bring your own stuff. Right. Yeah, I don't know how. I mean, if I want to play checkers, I want to go to the park. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a cute idea though, of like old guys. Yeah, my man playing chess. That's why I mentioned it. Because you're old guys. Yeah. 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 Testing plans yeah. or something. Be good. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I think for the, like the picnic tables, the benches, the trash receptacles. Um, I think that we do have a list and a standard yeah. and. I will work on getting that over to you. And then pricing would be great too. Yes, yeah. plug it right. You can plug it awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a one unknown that we can cross off. I figured you guys did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I know this is yeah. basically the style, but I don't know if it's the same for you. Yeah, so whatever you find. And then uh, the other piece we talked, I sent over to, um, might not be part of this group, but uh, on the bathroom, the bathroom has a checklist of add ons. And I finished that sheet, but then I found out that we're changing to. Mm -hmm. uh, Two stall okay. instead of a single stall. So, so I resend that over to okay. everybody too. So yeah, if you want to get those pieces. So yeah, I think like I said, as long as the park general idea is good, we can move forward. And then yeah, we just need to start filling in the little pieces. So real quick, just to maybe hopefully help option A and option B, they both fit inside of that same That's square right. foot. Yeah. So ultimately we can move forward, but then when we kind of decide a little bit more on maybe it's an in between the two, maybe we can't afford all of A, but we want a little bit more than B, and then all still fit. And the significant difference in A and B was the surfacing. Okay, that it wasn't was, the pieces okay. are kind of like uh, A gave you more pieces, than right? B. Okay, but B also took away the surfacing. That was the big difference. So I think I think there's a happy medium like A minus B plus that is the surfacing plus maybe a couple less pieces would probably get you where you want to be. But I think, yeah, I think the general idea Jeff was going for was you have the swings in the merry ground, which sounds are good. Mm -hmm. And then maybe some toddler area. So two or three pieces, it would be toddler-like. Right. Like, you know, like, like you said, the, maybe learning plus toddler, that, that'd be awesome. And then, mm -hmm. and then a, a, some sort of structure that would be the bigger one for the, the, the bigger kids want that, right? Some sort of structure. So I think that's kind of where we're trying to that would, in my mind, would be the big structure, the toddler area, the merry run, and the swings is is the baseline. And then if you want like a teeter teeter totter or a balance beam, those are like the right. sprinkles, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, climbing. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, climbing would be in my mind like part of the big structure, right? Okay. Whether it's two big structures. Yeah, one or, of yeah. those structures, I think it was in A, maybe had like a climbing thing and yeah, was, a net, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the yeah, that's the. So this is that single pole that you're. <laughs> Warning us about. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was in the the cheaper version. A little bit was the single, because I've seen also them have a, a structure that's multi-pole with net between. Yes. Yeah. Kathy, you had a question. Yeah. Well, a couple of comments. One um, at I think it's called Northwood Park. And they've got the dinosaur play structure that kids can go into and up and slide down and climb up on and you know their kids are always at that structure but another thing that came to mind and this may be totally off base but i thought it's an idea and i'll throw it out there 
I grew up in Southern California, so Disneyland was like my backyard. One of the things that really sticks in my mind is that Swiss Family Robinson, where you've got the ropes that you climb up to an open tree fort, and you know, cars being Disneyland, they're safety conscious, so there's railings and things, but it really had a, an appeal and a draw, and there were people of all ages that would just flock to it. And I thought, I don't know if we could do something kind of like a Swiss Family Robinson, because you have the netting you can climb up or you know up, up stairs or ramp or whatever and not have it so high that you know it's going to be death defying but something that kind of provides a sense of adventure with a little bit of athletic outlet yeah just a thought mm -hmm. okay i i just want to make sure before we move on there i want to make sure that everybody's had a chance to give their opinion on you know what they're expecting or what they would like to see in, in Bo and Jeff and the people from HHBR, you know, or do you have questions for this group? I think you kind of know, you know, pretty much what direction we were heading because I don't want to, we have more on the agenda. Sure. I don't want to hold you here for that information. So I have one quick question. The splash pad. Um, I live near Maple Street, great slash pad that has inadequate covered area on a hot day for parents to hang out while their kids are playing. Do we have anything in the future or do we have space for anything in the future? So the top yeah, of that, yeah. I'll go. I would say at the top of the splash pad, you, you can see there's three, we were found, shown three. Um, yes. Great. We've got go ahead, there three right here on the screen. So we, right now we have kind of three benches on that other side, so mm -hmm. watch, watch. I mean, I there's probably some potential to do some sort of covered awning or something. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, in other well, projects I've done something. everything yeah. from yeah structures I for shade, shade tree or something. yeah to trees. Mm -hmm. Well, there's those two trees. They could be repositioned so that they offered some shade to those benches. Yeah, yeah, that's. Not gonna be much shade for several years. True. <laughs> and leaves on the drain. Yeah. When you change the position of the benches, we'll move to the west side when they have where those benches that have like canopies that come over. And then when the sun does start to set, it's just beating on it all the time. Yeah, that's just an observation from Maple Street. Okay. Yeah, I think I think there's options we look like yeah, none of the planting set in stone either, you know, but I think I don't know. You also have that huge, that huge trees there somewhere too. Um, but yeah, I think I think Jeff would maybe try to see if there's a way to do some covered, mm -hmm. um, some covered spots that you can have a splash pad. Anything else from the Auburn Farms folks? You guys have any comments, questions? I know you were here mostly to observe and to see. Um, I had one other thought, you know, you have the, like the uh, balance beam and the little toadstools, which are fun, but they are not totally accessible. And one thing I really like at the Eccles, I think it's at Eccles, they have some painted activities oh, on the ground. All right. Well, the I edge love it. it. My son goes to Troth, yeah. so whenever we go to Eccles, that's like a special treat for their seasonal activities he can follow. His little sister can do it too, and it seems like it would be fairly inexpensive and a little bit more accessible. I don't know if that can be printed on the tiles or mm. if that's something that could be incorporated, but just a thought. Is that on the painted on the black right? yeah. asphalt? There? Yeah, they're called like edge markings or mm -hmm. something. Right. Yeah, we kicked on the out of all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Can they be like on, along the pathways or is that would that be something to? I don't, I don't, I can't envision what you're talking about. So I'm just. It's like a puzzle on the ground or like a hopscotch that's painted on the ground. See the area next to the, with the, yeah, the brown. If you went to the left of that, on oh, yeah, the other yeah. side of the sidewalk in there, could you do like a strip of that, you know, like in that area, would that be a, a, a right. area to put asphalt with that kind of stuff? Yeah, or right? even on the sidewalks that are there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, it's like hop on your left foot. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, so it's nothing so dramatic. Or okay, so yeah, you could still fun. walk there. Oh, the yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it looks like there's plenty of concrete if they wanted to do something like that. Yeah, right. And so it seems like that right in that area where you're pointing, it seems yeah. like that's a lot. It would be a good area for that. If anybody wanted to, I mean, you're familiar with it, then go over to Echo School. 
It's a backward player, and you can see they got a bunch of them. Okay. There's a bunch of them back there, and you can see what looks like. So that's probably something that could be added later to the part two. Right? Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. So I think, yeah, some of the stuff, as you know, we're trying to the big engineering things, but yeah, some of the stuff like uh, um, on the left, can you scroll to the left? Or the, I was thinking about, you know, you, can you see the little waves in the, in the path we did? We, were, right. we did that because we wanted to make it more exciting. Right. Um, I might consider maybe on the left, on our far left now, that we have that big stretch, I might consider doing a couple waves in, not that guy, in the, in the asshole, that guy. Right. Maybe do a couple waves in that one too, just to make it more exciting. Uh, that still wouldn't take away from putting a tennis court in there later or anything like that. Um, so I might consider that just to get it. Uh, one quick question. Uh, are you know the parts guys are probably really like this because they love those S curves. Yeah. And not how much of the curve you're doing it. It worked. Right. It'd be similar to a truck, truck. Similar to the ones we show on. Right, but a truck with like uh they've got one of those oh. leaf munchers that they tell a tiny truck. And so something like that, if you are pulling a trailer for maintenance yeah. wise, making sure. We'll do it. Especially if we're gonna talk about going to 90 sure. instead of 10. How exciting is a curve? It was just a comment earlier that, that yeah. before it was just a straight track, and they, yeah. as a walker, they wanted to break it up because it, it seemed boring. Okay. And, and so this, this gave it a little more exciting, you know, yeah. character. Yeah. It gave character and gave some options. To, and so, are we talking about scooching the, the two picnic tables like into that little corner area and then making it straight down from like that the side of the tree? Uh, we're talking about that path right there would go straight down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that path would go down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then with the picnic tables kind of scooch over there behind the basketball area. No, they would stay. Um, There's the picnic tables are you know, it'd just be the connection would go from that one gazebo and go straight down. Um, and so then you have one big square open field over there. Yeah. All right, the uh quickly the trees that are planted, are they um, gonna be a play variety where it over years and not pushing up the sidewalks and whatnot? Do we know that? Well, the city has a required, I mean, a tree list that they work on, yeah. so it'll be have to fall within those. Right. Yeah, that's where so I that's, pulled the species from. All yeah. right. Uh, we could do root barrier if, yeah, if it gets helpful. I do have a question about the soccer area that was just added. Um, if we're squaring off that sidewalk to kind of make it more rectangular, do you still only want one goal or? Yeah, one goal because if we put another goal down at this end, because we talked about that, but if we put two goals, they'll be kicking balls into the neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, wow. up there, there's nothing but field right now. So. I'm just trying to, uh, I, I don't want to be uh, intrusive on the, on the yeah. neighbors. So, how does that work? If we're fencing the whole thing, obviously you're worried about kicking into the neighbor's yard, but if you start kicking it, Kicking over fences, right? The other direction. So, are we going to well, have some type of gate or some type of opening? Because if you kick it there and there's no, there's opening, there's there's just gonna have to cut it. Out some fence. There will need to be a gate or something. So right, right now you're 30 feet away from the, that. Just for reference, you're 30 feet away. Is that that's that distance right there's 30 feet. So, don't all those houses have fences up? On Not the, all of them. Uh, they don't. No. Oh. A few of them do. Yeah. And I think the decision was that we weren't going to mismatch, like get a wood fence. It's it's also tricky because people don't put their fence on the property line necessarily too. So I think it was tricky that this guy has a wood fence, but then this one is open, and they have a wood fence. Just doing a chain link between didn't really feel right, and then these people would say, "Well, how can they, you know, free fence?" You know. So I think we just decided to just fence so that one entire thing with chain link. That's a question that's going to come up because some of those people, most of the people have fence or along dots or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some do not, and they're going to want the city to put a fence in for them. Or is that, is that piece, I guess, to the north, is that master planned already? I mean, I think there's a, a way, there's a walkway into the park, is there not, or a fire? Not to anything to the north right now. The one in the south. Yeah. There's two, two on the two, south. But I assume the north side is going to be the same. I mean, I guess if we're going to put these gates in for the fall of the north fence, that's we need to pre plan that. Well, if, mm -hmm. 
I mean, we're all, but if a, if a development goes to the north and there is property that's going to be given to the city in lieu of SDCs, we would, I think, take the property and add to that park, you know, and build, make that park larger than what it is currently today. So say that's three acres and we get three acres above, then we've got a much larger, larger park. That's why I say, I mean, we put a cycle fence up there, and not a cycle fence, but yeah. that one, so. Who owns that? Is that, is that your family? Who? It's another family. Do you have a cost on the unit just for the um, splash pad? Like what that would cost? I mean, yeah. put yourself away something. But yeah. just that unit itself. Yeah. Uh, splash pad, 66,000. Okay. Nice. So back to the soccer goal. Was this, and what we were talking about the soccer fleet, was it going to be a stationary? Is it going to be a, like a full size soccer goal or smaller? I would just put a stationary, I mean, just me thinking I would put it stationary in there. And I know Jerry talked about, you know, putting it in concrete or something so it couldn't be moved. I mean, those movable ones, you'll end up all over the town. What are you doing with it? At the legacy. legacy. Yeah. legacy. Yeah, they make some that come in with like a built in chain link net in the structure itself. Um, and then they make some with just holes, and you got to provide your own net. Um, yeah. I don't know what your preference is, but and then there was the issue with mowing inside there. So did the parks guys have to move everything, or, or the, was that what we have to they made the inside of the net? Where the yeah. Where yeah. Did square, the you did a square, part was turf, and that thing stayed there. Um, then yeah, then you have kind of a you know you full size is pretty problem. big, so I don't know if you want you know there's a you know, youth soccer is right. this size. And you wouldn't size have to go inside that area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I'll get a hold of Jerry and just see yeah, as he says, let's proceed with this general layout. We can keep rolling and then, yeah, and then if, if we just start trickling in the ideas of the pieces. Well, I think if we get the, you know, so I think we've sent it out and maybe I'm mistaken, but the pieces of playground equipment, what you can choose from, I mean, we, I can send it out to the board members and you guys can look it over and make recommendations what, what you, but I think we've pretty much covered yeah, some of the majors, yeah. except for that one large piece of them. Yeah, and we, I can give you guys all the printouts, and then I give you a thumb drive with all the stuff on it, and then you guys have emails. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys coming down and sitting in on this meeting. And, and uh, you know, we're, uh, I'm sure that we'll have you back. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, no, we yeah. uh, I think uh, we'll be good for a while. We've got a lot to talk about internally and, uh, you know, next few meetings or whatever, but yeah, awesome. we'll get you the information as soon as we can. Awesome. Great. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We didn't get yelled at, so that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry said. <laughs> All right, uh, the next item on the agenda was a Maple Tree Park, the phase two lighting update. And I know Ryan, uh, the guys from Musco, I believe, came out to talk about, uh, to talk about, uh, about the lighting and give them some uh, training people, I guess, on how to run the lights and everything so maybe if you have anything that you want to talk about as far as the how that goes uh it went great um it sounds like there's a couple you can do it through their site or there's an app and then i think the city's trying to figure out they can set up some users and admins and so the city's trying to get the it's a pretty complex it's way more complex than i <laughs> imagine 
all the things you can do with it. Um, but they're, I think the city is going to have kind of the mass control as they should, and then they're going to set up some uh, some users that have some minimal controls, such as, hey, we need lights on right now, and you can just go to your app and do that, or you need to turn them off, and they can dim them. They said that they can kind of do it, so they'll start dimming, and so people get the hint to get out of the park. Um, and so you can, so like the baseball, softball, or whoever's going to have those admins would have control of, yeah, there's going to be a set time if, uh, if there's a schedule for it, so it'll come on and off automatically, or if you just, hey, we need them now, you can just go on, boom, they're on, and then boom, they're off. And pretty think it is. So they're not on a sensor? They're not on a sensor, no. They're either scheduled or you can turn them on. And I think there's a, so there's a key somewhere you can just do it manually. In the, yep. I'm not sure where that unit is at, but yeah, you can just go in and do it that way too. So there's a couple different ways to turn something. It really depends. I mean, it, it's kind of designed so. Um, well, I guess you know, many people can have access to the lights as the city feel comfortable with, or as you know, or minimum um, to do it. With many tiers in between, yes. where you can. So yes, so the yes. The, the head of the organization we might trust a little yes. bit more than just the yeah. fill-in parent. Like the coach wouldn't time. be able to go in there and redo the whole schedule. He can just turn them off and on, whereas the admin guy can go in there and set a schedule and kind of do it that way. Right. And I also, I mean, well, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I think in talking with Jared, I mean, there could be a way that if somebody wanted to come in and use those fields or you could charge them, you know, as far as. Yeah, there was a way they can monitor how much, they, they can, well, they can do that no matter what, but they can see who's been using it as long as they have to kind of fill in some information, otherwise it just goes blank. But I think you have an idea of who's using it, but you can. It'll, it'll shoot you out a report of yeah. here's give you a history. Of yeah, baseball has been using it Monday, Wednesdays from six to nine, and then softball and then soccer, whoever. Yeah. So yeah, you can have a you can trace it. Uh, Terry, I got a picture from you in regards when the perimeter lights came out on the walkway, and then I drove over there to take a look myself because I did. I thought it looked really good. It didn't seem to bleed into the name. Not at all. It was exactly as promised, but we only have them for two nights, and yeah. everybody's bummed because they aren't on. So I don't know what happened. That was a test, Diane. They were just testing them out just to make sure they work, and then once they get big lights up and running, everything will be turned off. And there were two other polls that have yet to be added to that. Uh, so. I mean, they were purchased, but there were add-ons. So I think the side, the outfield side, and then the, the I guess if you're standing in one place, the side to the left was lit. The side to the right was not where all the, the trees are that we trimmed back, or that these guys trimmed back. So there's some more lights that need to be added over there along that purchase. And then there's the thought that that will um cover the entrance from the like, the south parking lot Plus, because that younger children's play area yeah. in that area back there is what is really dark and what people were asking for the I think that's what was discussed this morning that there was two lights missing on that south end of the park by that place structure there are two and that's yet yeah, and that's where they're being added they were just purchased right yeah, so I'm guessing it probably will help a lot light up that entrance right there for a bit. Now is that? Yeah, it's it's so nice though. It's they can't be on soon enough. Are there any other things in the whole park? Believe other than those two, I'm going to put the Dave say this one. He says the project is pretty much done, but yeah, those two lights are on back order. They're on their way now. So have they turned on the big lights? To have you guys seen those on? No, yeah. Like those are gonna light up your house. Yeah. <laughs> and did they say when those would be when they would test those as well? Yeah, they're on that. I believe it was in the next week or two. That's what they were saying. I believe so. Okay. Yeah, they're not too far out on finishing up before they can test out the last of the lights. And then there we should be on maybe we'll have a grand lighting. <laughs> there you go. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to the Maple Street Park Phase Three, and I guess there's some topics that you know we need to discuss moving forward for Maple Street. And I just listed on your on the agenda that I hope everybody got some, you know, some items that we were that need to be discussed: parking, playground, restroom, trail repair, you know, an additional gazebo. Maybe uh, one of those basketball courts again, but and I said, you know, you know, maybe we prioritize, uh, you know, one to six before our next meeting. I think, right, right. So maybe these, you know, maybe our public works guys should have the input on that. So why you guys would? I, I, I. I just that I think parking is going to be a real issue, though. Well, I think That's parking is. Yes, for sure. That would be number one. I just don't know the rest. I'm not there enough, so you guys are there on a daily basis. But what, you know, I've heard playground needs to be replaced. Uh, bathroom, I haven't really heard. I mean, so I just didn't know what else needs is in dire need or not dire need. And that's where I kind of figured you guys know. But I put the that trail, the, I don't know what trail you're talking about so much as. So if you are at the pickleball courts and then there's the two baseball things and then there's the big long gazebo with the picnic tables in it and stuff, the trail that runs along there, that is a nightmare oh, safety grandkids, hazard. My grandkids love it. I yeah, I'm sure out on their bikes and stuff, but if the people walking, um that I think I, I, I just feel like you know, safety issues are a liability for the city and have to come as a priority over an inconvenience of having to walk away from parking. That's my own. Well, it's, like it's the safety, the parking is a safety issue on Maple Street. Yeah, you know, yeah. And yeah. people turning in them and yeah. back and forth in cars, it's a problem. Yeah. And the restrooms, those two softball tournaments they had there, they that lines getting into the bathroom that were 20 deep i guess and, it's, and it just took forever so the question about that is how many restrooms are we talking about just like two more single use stalls because that's not going to resolve 20 so, people in the home. Uh, so why, why aren't the users of the softball fields also providing port bodies well that's going to have that'll have to happen then exactly. those those directions are adequate for normal yeah, and they're perfectly fine. Uh, that's why we're yeah. that's why we're the users should provide restrooms for their events, you know, whilst they're doing business. That's for I mean the pool does it too, but to me, you know, I'll just you know my point of view, I mean the pool if they have a swimming a swim meet up there and you've got well People came in, and so they have one public restroom really, that's in there, and they bring the quarter pots up for everybody. To me, it just looks, you know, it's just me, right? So it just looks a little tacky. It looks like, oh, I don't want to either. Be. I sure don't want to use one. No, but most, a lot of people don't want to use it. So. That's a pretty huge expense to accommodate, any, and you know, like you say, adding two stalls is not going to. How many, how many stalls are in each of the bathrooms? Just one They're all one. They both of them. That's so they must have done that. The other one's burnt down, right? Or are they just not available? They knocked down. Like, so so they, those had ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. no one that one. Those were those in multiple in three or four, I think, on each side. So are they talking adding on to the existing or already? <laughs> They have the infrastructure to add another building. They have not, it's already there. The basketball court there and something? Yeah, somewhere Jerry said somewhere over in there. There's the, the I think that'd be a good spot. Yeah. So I mean that's that we're we're not gonna make these decisions no. today, but it's like priority parking, yeah, for sure. Parking is a real issue because Maple Street becomes a one lane road. When people are parked both sides, if Jim or first aid or you know, first responder had to get, I'm not sure they could make it down there. I don't know. Yes, yeah, but just as far as the, 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 the walking path, I guess, where she's talking about, mm -hmm. 
Is that something that like the street crew could get in there and fix that up? Possibly. I mean, yes. is that yeah, something that like that, that depending on how in depth we wanted to go, that is something that we could look at trying to fix in house. Uh, yeah. I haven't gone over and measured it out to see if it's more effective to try to have a contractor come in. And if you were serious about doing a parking lot, I would assume that that would be a small enough thing comparison wise to the whole project of you got an asphalt crew out there building a parking lot. Hey, run a, you know, left over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're more right, think how wide is that path? Maybe. Four by eight. Yeah, it's, small. So, it's not very. Yeah, it's, I don't remember it being very wide. Mm -hmm. So that's where it, it really wouldn't be that much. Why well, we have a picture of it. So we have we have two paths in that area, right? You have the smaller, narrower one that heads to the um, right picnic area, and then the main path. Do we even so, the yeah, somewhere? that that little one kind of seems redundant. Yeah. It's almost like an afterthought. Or it was the original one when they added the main path. So I, yeah, I mean, it's that one that's going to be over the one next to the baseball well, field. Yeah, right, no, right, right there. Right there. Yeah. yeah. So it goes underneath those trees, and yeah. then yeah, because there's the picnic structure. Yeah, it's right along those those trees. It's the roots from the trees yeah, that have bumped it all right, up. Right, right. So it's saying why we need that. Why do we that? need that? Yeah, 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 got right path next to it. Why spend the resources when we have a path right there? So yeah, I don't disagree, but something needs to be done to make it like disable it or something, you know, yeah, take yeah. it out of yeah. use so that it's sure. Yeah. 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 grass. Yeah, something because right now the way it is, it's hazard in my opinion. Terry, you live there. What do you, I mean? Yeah, so just take it out. Take it yeah. Out. I know the, you know, one of the other things we've, you know, we've been talking about. Uh, Replacing the playground equipment in those areas for a long time, too. I mean, that's old equipment. My grandkids used to yeah. really kind of like it, but they never started. Do we need two playgrounds? Can we just do one playground? Well, cool. it's at least in that parking lot before we go out. The only thing with playgrounds is you have to provide a uh, Younger age and an older age play structures. And that's what I think of this. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Right. Do they have to be separated? No, you can't like combine them if you got this square footage. But I mean, I, I've heard you say before that we need, it, it said before that we need to replace this the equipment. And I've been there a couple of times and I, I mean, it just, it's just, it's, Playground equipment. It's out in the weather all the time. It's faded, yeah. It's but it slides and it's you know swings and it's just playground equipment. I don't know that it's in disrepair or unusable. Like like so. My grandkids like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my wife. My kids love show. it. Is it a liability yeah. issue? Is that why we're thinking about even replacing it or what? I mean, well, they are ADA, ADA, there are ADA standards. Yeah. There are so, children in this neighborhood. So maybe in literally the, come on the chairs on a regular basis, and there is nothing for them to make it. Okay, so can, it's not just can we think about maybe adding things instead of like replacing it as whole? So all options. That well, I think you know, one you have to replace the sure. sure. yeah. Right. So that's a big one. Right, we can't have parts. Oh man, it's, I think when I was a kid, it was there. I was going to yeah. say, I heard Jake played there. When and the green, that was almost 40 years. Yeah. So the, those two uh, basketball courts, um, there's a possibility of removing one of those to add more playground space or do something different. Well, one of them yeah. might be coming in. Back. That might oh, be right, right. Going. Okay. Ryan, I, 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 something was going to come out. <laughs> no, well, yes. I mean, obviously, the one, that one where the, the arrow is on would be that's a foul ball city right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's not a good problem. So I think it's sure. a bathroom and maybe like a small covered area because I know there's a lot of not teams, kind of a. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, if we want to keep the basketball court, then you already got one right there that's the secondary one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're kind of 
limited unless you wanted to stick it way out in the corner pocket and then where that grass is because that's pretty much unused at this point but that's a ways from anything does it make sense to I mean, do we have enough kids going to this park that we need three playground areas or i mean what well, i mean if we're talking about just adding an ada devoted playground does that make sense i don't know yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why we would have three separate areas. I don't know okay. how many families bring enough adults to supervise their kids in three different areas. It's just, you know, again, it's like, I think the one, the things that we need to focus on, right, and maybe you don't have to replace them. Both at once, maybe you maybe work towards a phase of maybe phases. do the larger one first and the smaller one second, or you well, know, I mean, but it's kind of unfair if we're going to make if we're going to make one ADA compliant and, and then we need to make them both ADA because yeah. well, when we've got kids age surface wise. I mean, number one, I mean, the surface has yeah, to change. Has to change. Yeah. So, so do we, we playground have to, I mean, the whole section have to be changed or could we make like a certain, you know, area, you know, third of it be kind of AA compliant and the rest of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That way yeah. You have yeah. I don't know. You have to have AA well, yeah, but you could take yeah. that playground and maybe if some of that equipment is still good or you know you could take a section and put some ada um, pieces in, in and a section. surface and surface that specific yes, so, uh, well no you'd have to surface the whole thing and you'd have to surface the whole thing. so, so what if you instead go ahead i was going to say what if you instead of having just that big huge playground section what if you chopped it into two different ones so yeah you only have to you have an ADA section and then you have like a grass median and then another one. That way you have technically two playgrounds and you don't have to do the whole thing. I just yeah. <laughs> what they said is the adding those mats does not sound like a big deal, but we could do that like around the structure. Yeah, it's a big it's, it's, it's not a big deal as Poor, but it's way more than the witches, right? Yeah. It's still, right. A, it's, it's but, still a big deal. Right. It's a big deal. Lesser. Or the mat tiles. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's still way more than the wind chips. So right, the city right. Has, but, but could we do it around so, some of the established equipment? Unless they're taken on the plate, I don't understand. Right, but I mean, could it be done? Like, yeah, you know, like if you have a. I don't know. So. Type coming up out of you can put carpet around it. So could we do tile around you know getting up to speed on a lot of the talk stuff? Yeah, I don't know how to do all the rules sort of you know the condition of well certified inspector. I think you know we wouldn't have one. Yeah when he goes every two years and gets recertified. Yeah, I was certified. I think he has mentioned that it's pretty well playground equipment and you hear this talk it's been helpful. Yeah, yeah, thirty plus. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was when I was at the district. I was certified, and I, my grandkids play that equipment, so I was always looking at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to we'll have to take. Well, obviously, we're not going to come to a census here on this, but we'll have to we'll have to come up with a uh, a goal, come up with a a priority list. Yeah, and start. Can I ask you a question about that though? You said the priority list. Everybody kind of seemed to say the parking probably should be top of that list. Right? Mm -hmm. Can we start moving forward with that, like getting things moving so they can start by? Spring? I think we have. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so do we have the money to do that? It's a, do we have the money to do it? I know they're talking about instead of paving it, they're talking about maybe gravel. And so. And that's what Jerry's been talking about. So 
Yeah. That would be great if it works. Going back to the, if we do ADA there, and I don't know, maybe you, Counselor, could you use SEC money? Because that's bringing in different, you're expanding the use of the park versus replacing? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. I would say. Source of different money? I've never done anything with the parks SDCs before, so I can't answer that one right now. I can find out, and let you know. I um, mean, so, the, so I don't the, think it would. Yeah. The Auburn Farm is over three million dollars. Is that what I saw on the thing? Well, it was for that one option, but we'll we'll whittle that down to two. two. It's going to be over two. Over two. It's like so, two and a half. Which is like. <laughs> one and a half more than we thought it originally, right? I mean, back in 2007. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not that yeah. far back, but a few years ago, anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like um, we need to start like prioritizing globally because Absolutely. money is we're, not we're, water. Right. But, but we're rehashing things that have already been decided on. Yes, right. and established right. Right. It's, it's listed out here in a one to three year short term. So it was, yeah, prior to us, this was already decided. Right. So it's. Is that the CID chair? Um, this is the advisory board workshop from August 2nd, 22. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the second goal, number one item, was to replace all of those programs. Uh, in the ADA component. Right. Well, so, can, can you modify, like if it is structurally sound, can you modify and if, for instance, if you've got four swings, make one of them the ADA harness type of swing. And sure. then if you've got the merry-go-round, maybe there's space to add the ADA safe one or replace just that piece as opposed to replacing you know, everything or creating yeah. a whole separate. Because it seems to me, I mean, I... I don't know, but I would think if a family has a couple of kids and one of them is in a wheelchair, they would want to play with their friends or their siblings yeah. to be kind of in the same space as opposed to the segregation of you I know, kind of feel like that's what we were saying is yeah. that we have to figure out the floor. But other than that, I, I think those those mats and I mean this is just my opinion, but those mats, I've seen kids playing on them and they're they seem to weather really well. They're safe. There's buoyancy to it through, you know, any stumbles or falls, and um, they're nice looking. And they provide that smooth, even surface if a child is in a wheelchair or a mother's bringing, you know, her stroller with her kids in it or whatever it may be. And it just seems to me like it's a real user-friendly surface with that addition of it being a safety factor. Right. So. Well, we've got. Uh... We still have some, I mean, we have some work to do and we're not going to settle it out. Well, we can't all agree that the parking lot is going to be I think we can agree that parking is going to be an issue. And it's going to be. It's currently the, an issue, it sounds yeah. like. It's currently an issue. It's going to be an issue if we don't do something. Uh, so, Spencer, can you maybe find out about the gravel and Although I'd love to have it paved, but obviously yes. there's an expense to that. But I don't know what its code is for I don't think we can, I don't think that we can technically, and I might be, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but I don't think we can put in a gravel parking lot. No. Now, if there was gravel there and a way that vehicles could drive onto the gravel, I don't know. As long as I don't <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, it was grandfathered in, but um, I didn't know if there was gravel there. It's, it's only it's parking in there. It's not official. It would be very similar to what is going on over here in the yeah, right. wayside property. It's, it's not a dog park, right? But there is a spot that is graveled, and people are allowed to go out and use it. I, I don't know. I might be overstepping it's already and not allowed to do that. Yeah. The area you guys are talking about for parking is um, so if you're standing looking at the right pickleball there. courts, there. yes, that purchased. Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's really ideal. I mean, a lot of parking could get in there. 
Yes. So we get like an estimate or just like a really rough estimate for next year. Absolutely. Like yeah. both things, whether we're yep. yep. perfect. And if you want to take some of these trees, you can yeah. take them all. Yeah. yeah. And then I think I want to, before I verify this, I think that there was talk um, that I heard from Dave Connor, who's been kind of heading up a lot of these projects on replacing the um, playground equipment uh, for this year. I know he was talking about that, and I remember him saying that there was money to do two different things, or both things but before i say exactly what they were mm -hmm. um i want to confirm that i know what those things were okay. um do you remember i don't think that was a part of that okay well it wasn't a meeting that was the problem i think i was eavesdropping on, on the we, we can bring those forward yeah well the upgraded fields we're, they're going to get used that's the whole idea to have them and we need the parking um but I think a gravel, people will park willy nilly and it won't be a good use of the space. Yeah. You can't have gravel because they'll be like. Yeah. We um, tried that at the high school at the Douglas Street parking lot. It hasn't worked out so well. <laughs> yeah. Now they're using it though. Yeah. Yeah. Just because the ballers do it. Yeah. Not the ball. <laughs> Once again, I think we have identified the parking is the priority right now. And we yeah. let the experts figure out what to do. Okay, so what I'm going that, to that's on Jerry's plate. That's on Jerry's plate. I'll tell him that. But parking's number one, and then it sounds well, kind of like a playground is number two. I'm, I'm thinking well, number two because it's cheap, but you need to get rid of it. Playground, yeah. playground and restroom, I think, are going to be your top three. So yeah. basically, how they're numbered is how important they are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. To say aloud, if we can work around the trees, keep as, as many trees as possible. And if the trees have to come out, if we can add trees, because I think that it makes well, a lot of difference. Yeah, if, if they do have to come out, it'd be nice to add. Thank you. Um, and, and, you know, if the trail removal would be, I mean, that sounds fairly <laughs> and I mean, I'm not saying it has to be top priority, but it just seems like a housekeeping issue that just be taken care of so so yeah. simultaneously and just get rid of that whole issue. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving down, I, we had Pebble Park State Park Project discussion moving forward with American Rank. I mean, I mean it's been, we had our workshop, it was kind of decided that we'd like to do that. You know, we put it, but it's, Sandy had their open house on November 2nd. I guess it was, you know, it was uh, a pretty big deal. So uh, we're not going to make that decision right now, right here. I mean, so it's we're going to table that for now. Um, Ryan Potter isn't here for a staff update. Andrew Hale's not here for a cabinet update. If Jim would like to uh, say any words of wisdom. Uh, well, I did receive a uh, on my uh, city email uh, a nice email from Rochelle uh, Pets and Barry. I sent that letter to you, uh, but it's in regards to living at Ivy Ridge Estates on the southwest part of Canby. I believe this might be that property that is currently that at one point we were looking at trying to make it into a park. Sure. And uh, so the neighborhood is uh, seeking who they've reviewed the park master plan. Uh, they're also looking at the trail that goes along the Malala River. And uh, they wanted to come and talk uh, as far as what they uh, can do in regards to getting that property developed into a park. So anyway, I forwarded that to you. And uh, you know, because I think it does need to go back for this committee to look at. Well, it, I mean, it definitely does. Yeah. And it's all money. Yeah. Well, and we brought it up in the past too. That we property was so exactly. Are we looking at the property? That is a property, right? This is that the property. right there. Okay. Well, and there's a piece and across. Right and I'm there. trying to figure out where we are. Here it is. South Ivy Street. South Ivy. 
Home Village. Village Bridge. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Oh, okay. Where's Hope Village then? Right uh, it was in well, front of it. Uh, Hope Village, right Township, there. and then right the park. The vacant land. That was the one that uh, Jerry was trying to get flattened, put the irrigation into, and stuff like that. Right. And, uh, the city council at that time uh, chose not to do it. Okay. Um, right. And if, if I can add to this, um, I was reached out to by one of the homeowners that lived there. Um, first time wanted me to come out and look because they're talking about uh, really bad mole holes that are starting to, because it's just an open field. Um, yeah. And it is kind of an eyesore. Um, it's only like everyone can, I think, see Dodds or other farms that property was before i was working here so I, when does anyone know right. 20 well, years 20 years 20 years um, yeah. and so they started in 2007 so talking about. Uh, the homeowners were what i had said that i had a meeting tonight to go over a similar thing from 20 years ago and their faces just went completely white and yeah. so not that i have any say you know, I think the important thing to remember is not that we don't want to put a park there. Right. But there was never and that's park land. Yes. But it's not like the right. realtor may have said this is going to be a park. Right. The city never said, hey, we're in plans to do something for you. That's the same. I mean, that's the same thing that happened with those uh, the Autumn Farm is yes. the city owned it, and the realtor when they moved in said, oh yeah, this is park land. It's going to be a park, and then they get pissy because where's my park? Well, right. obviously. You know, when you get an ADA, I mean, money really have so much, right. uh, and it takes some time to get everything else uh, up to speed versus that. But I, I do think we could probably put some dirt or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll find some grass and yeah, find green space. And if this was going to be 2.5 to 3, we certainly don't have 2.5 to 3. And the other one that's forgotten, which I think is even longer than that one, is the one right next to. Uh, Feist. Feist edition that's okay. been there for 30 years. A lot. The lot next to the. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so anyway, that needs to, a decision needs to be made by this group and the recommendation back to the city council. If we're not going to do something, then I can then we look at selling the property or doing something. Okay. Like that. We took that in on, that was part of the exchange. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if you can because that's what happened to that piece right there. Is I don't think technically we can see. Well, we, we would have to check with the attorney on that. Yeah, it makes no sense to have a vacant field there. It's an eyesore for the for the people well, there. Yeah, and I think eventually it could be developed. It's like well, right, I think right. that in Willow Creek we have um, a tennis court, and on either side is city-owned property. That way back, uh, you know, 20, almost 30 years ago when we moved in there, um, I met with Matilda Dees. I don't know if anybody remembers uh, her. Yeah. And she said, Yeah, this is our property and it's park property and we have yeah. no money or uh, the will to do anything with it. So have at. And so we developed them both into park and we maintain them all the time. And they're yeah. technically city parks, and we take care of it. And well, maybe that neighbor would be interested in something like that. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. 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 community garden. Yeah, somebody yeah. 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 between yeah. Ivy and Holly yeah. yeah. and the community yeah. garden. Somebody, yeah. somebody yeah. had talked about, you know, can we make that community garden something? Uh, they they, they just make. I mean, yeah. we're stretched thin. Yeah, why don't we? invite them to a meeting and then we can kind of just go through some options and say like here's what we have here's our wallet we need to get on trying to design oh, the no, park no, no. Yeah. 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 for that and just you know, yeah. something else got to do some two we yeah. at least green scapes i think we all yeah. where we can i think we all wanted to have it originally when i was yeah. about three or four years ago we wanted to gather this Put grass and right. all good. Okay. Oh. Right now, and the council said, "Thanks, but no thanks." Right. Not this council. Not this council. Previous. The culprits and the poles are just kind of yeah. Well, and also, 
excuse me, sorry. sorry. Um, also, I'm thinking if a, a neighborhood is passionate about an area that can be transformed into a park space, if they know that they can be empowered, they're not infringing on any uh, regulations or anything, to create a, a beautiful green space, I think that there would be people motivated to do that. I know if I was at well, I just kind of take the liberty. <laughs> but if there are areas that can use improvement, you know, you just, I mean, they could even, if they were wondering about funds, they could do bank sales and ticket. I mean, if they empower themselves to know that they have that ability uh, or the, the permission, well, if, then um, I think a lot can be done. Gonna, I mean, if we do it, Community garden or whatever, and then they can have that, but we don't have the funds to do really right. anything. Right. We would like that property. We would love to develop it into a park. We don't have the funds right now to be able to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So we just need to provide. Basically, it's gonna be like volunteers for like beautification of like small green spaces. Right. Yeah. David well, can be beautification club or whatever it is. That can be everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that you? So, uh -huh. so <laughs> well, I mean, you know, so there you go. To move along my report, right? Okay. So I've been up since 115 this morning. So starting to fade pretty good. So anyway, um, the uh, one thing that this committee I would ask that you do too, uh, moving forward as we get into budget is if you remember the city council wanted you to prioritize and readjust the uh, CIP in order to do the pedal park. So you need to make recommendations to Jerry in regards to how to budget for that. If you want to do the pedal park, something else has to be moved. Remember that discussion and work session. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, you might want to get that on the agenda soon uh, because budget's right around the corner. Uh, as far as uh, getting those uh, prioritized. Uh, the uh, no new news uh, from the city administrator yet on the athletic fields uh, or the hotel, uh, it is on the council's uh, goals and objectives uh, that that be done. And I continue to push for the hotel and the athletic fields, and I will continue to push for that. Uh, I think that we need that, we need that in this community um, and so we'll continue to uh, push for the hotel and athletic fields. Uh, just on a side note, two, the transition of command for fire chief is going to occur on, we'll put out a notice uh, on all the websites. But anyway, it's going <clears> to <throat> take place on 12-14, uh, December 14th um, from 12 to 3. There will be kind of an open house, but at one o'clock, the ceremony of transition from myself to uh, Matt Dale will occur then too. So it'll be a fairly decent uh, sized uh, ceremony. So Matt will get sworn in. They're going to kick me out the door <laughs> and call her good, you know. So um, <clears throat> those are those are the big things. We we have a full council agenda tomorrow night, uh, along with an executive session. So. Uh, many of them are just uh, ordinances that that reading on ordinances that we need to approve. Any progress on the pool and the remodel? Uh, yeah, the uh, presentation was made to us by Eric and in a work session. <coughs> that was yeah, there. but nothing since then. Nothing since then. It's been like two yeah. months or six months. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I hope they do something pretty soon. I went by there last weekend and people had tents outside. They had a big swim meet there. Yeah, they had a big swim meet and people had tents set up for, for the rain yeah, and stuff like that outside. And uh, Inspector, the Jerry was going to look at striking outside the uh, entrances of Maple Street Park setbacks so that he was going to make that no parking. Uh, on Maple Street so that uh, people can see when they're coming out of that driveway, especially when they're oh. working on both sides. Uh, on Maple Street itself, yeah. if you're coming out. Okay. Y yeah, just enough space to where when they can come out, they can actually see both sides. Make sure somebody's not parking all the way up to the driveway. To so the driveway, yep. yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, you've been here. Uh, you missed the early uh, welcome guest. Uh, your name is? 
Rob Yarbrough. Ron Yarbrough. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, I moved to Canby in 95, and it was in April, and uh, the, there were these red, pinkish trees that were just absolutely gorgeous in town, all through the northern part of town. And uh, <clears throat> since then, I've, I've often thought that, you know, it would be really, really, really nice that uh, we, we kind of promote those trees in order to turn our city into something like uh, um, our, our theme of a garden spot. That would just be a little enhancement of that. And as I liken it to the apple blossoms in Washington, D.C. And uh, I, I talked with Brian or Mayor Hudson, and he said that I should run that by you because he really thought it was a great idea. <laughs> well, he's the guy that could make it happen. <laughs> but he wanted, to, he wanted to have buy it often. And, and I asked him, I said, does the city have a city tree? And he said he doesn't think so. He doesn't know. He says he, he knows that there's a list of trees, but he doesn't know that there's the tree that if uh, uh, somebody calls and asks, uh, what kind of tree would you recommend that I plant? Well, to keep it in with the garden spot, that you, they would recommend it to plant a pink dogwood tree if the environment is conducive. And uh, so that's kind of what my my pitch is, is I would, I'd like to see something move forward. And I don't know if there's any rules. I, I know that there's a list of trees, but I don't know where the pink dogwood tree falls on that list. Uh, as being a bad tree. I've got one right in the middle of my yard, and it's a really nice tree. There's Here's three the dogwoods right here, and the uh, trees permitted a minimum three foot planting area with no, no overhead utility wire. Um, and dogwoods are also good in that they don't have a lot of uh, roots that come above right. the surface. Right. And they're very, I, very I have very never had any problem with that in my yard. I'm not saying somebody else has. Yeah, so those uh, are the only the canopy canopy was really but kind of cool. And the leaves really drop off really fast and they're not really big leaves. They're kind of medium sized leaves. Yeah, me too. Well, it is. I mean, I, mean, I guess it's something that, you know, we can talk about, but it's not anything that we can decide today. Right. Karen right. put together a, 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 a policy for pension trees, you know, to sponsor. You know, if you want to sponsor a tree or plant it, you can. Buy it and put it in and put a plaque on it with your name and, or a bench or whatever. But, you know, I mean, I would have said I, this is something that I would take back to city council because. Yeah, you know, it, it uh, was, Ron, Ron, that you bring up a really good point. But as we grow in this, uh, Section J, for instance, down by the spinning wheel or the gerbo is going up in that new subdivision when that develops and stuff like that. That's a perfect time to be talking to Brian Potter at the, and planning at the city as far as what kind of trees should they, they be planting on those main arterials and stuff. So uh, if it's dogwood or your your thoughts of the color of trees and stuff like that, I think that, that it's a great idea. You know, because now is a good time to do that, especially right. with the developments that are going to be happening. That right. looks super cool going up there and having those planted along the way up there. And the business part. Yeah. If we really wanted, I mean, if the city wanted to designate a tree as the city tree, um, there may be some way that we could, like, in, you know, somehow pool our resources in order to get a maybe, you know, encourage people if they're going to replace a tree to replace it with a dogwood, that kind of thing. And, and I think that's what Brian was looking for. That's why he asked me to come to you yeah. guys. It's uh, please get your buy off on it. And and if you have any other comments, you guys have had really good comments. And Brian, I would I prefer that I encourage you because I think that's maybe out of the scope of uh, to a certain degree. Uh, uh, this <laughs> <laughs> but but the point is, if we get more traction, if you come under a comment at the city council. Because that's a really yeah, good point. That's the place. 
Yeah, as co vendor, yeah. the comment because then it could be shifted to planning where it belongs. You have, you have three minutes, you could present pictures, you could do the whole nine yards and present it to city council. Maybe. And that was a good one to do a job. Hey. Well, I know what you do too. So. <laughs> Uh, all right. Can I just make Thank a quick comment in reference to that? I'm also involved with a group called Campy Area Beautification. We've been planning. I see your logo. Yeah. Oh, that's. <laughs> anyway, the um, we did trees alternating with dogwoods and crepe myrtles around the parking lot of the um, fairgrounds, uh -huh. and so we indicated that they could be commemorative or memorial trees. Right. And um, sold them, I can't remember if it was 100 or 150 dollars or something, and bam, you know, word spread and they sell, sold out really, really quickly. Oh so I think that if you, um, if there's a way that it can be communicated once a tree is designated through, you know, I do like press releases for tab when we're having planting days and things with the paper and <laughs> to the newsletter for the city and all of that kind of thing. And it might be nice. If it's designated to spread the word and say, hey, you know, we are the garden spot, here's the tree that's been designated. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody that can, let's all plant trees, mm -hmm. or if you're replacing a tree or something, and just, you know, go through some channels to get the word out and maybe walk flyers around neighborhoods or something like that. I think that I, it's an idea that I, I really, really love, and we've been talking about it in the beautification group. Some years ago, that just so I guess I can tell Brian that you guys are in support of it. <laughs> tell Brian to plant one of those trees in his front yard. Yeah. <laughs> we'll the all look at it. <laughs> Jim, you look like you're fading. Do you have anything else? No. All right, our next meeting is December the 17th, right here at 6 30. Can I get a motion to adjourn? No so move. I'll second. Me. Kara. Yeah. See you next time. Okay. Yeah.